the revolution in molecular biology in the 1970s allowed us for the first time to cut and paste DNA sequences in a test tube and then these could be then introduced into, um, into living cells but via quite laborious routes. Um, the big deal about gen genome editing is that you can carry out the change in the living cell. I think one of the people I mentioned in the book, George Church um, of Harvard University, said it's a bit like changing a piston in a car while the pistons, while the car's still going. It's that kind of level of, of being able to do this in a living cell. Um, so essentially there's two ways you can do this. You can either just knock out genes, I stop them working. That, that's a kind of the easy way of using genome editing. Or you can actually make a very precise change by introducing a piece of DNA that is slightly different to the piece you want to exchange. Um, but both these can be, can be done with, with genome editing. Um, so essentially, once you modify that cell, well, that then, if that cell divides, it will, it will, the, the change will be inherited. Now, that means that you could, you could treat a, a living cells within a tissue. For instance, if you've got diseased muscle in, in a boy with muscular dystrophy, then you could try and correct all the, all the, the, the defective cells in that muscle, you know, there and then. Um, but you can also apply this to the fertilised egg. That's another kind of revolutionary side of this. This, this technique can be used with fertilised eggs. So that can mean that you can create a, a living organism, like a pig or a monkey, um, from modifying the genome of the, of the, of the fertilised egg. Um, it also means for the first time in human history, and this is both exciting and kind of quite scary, we can modify the human genome of, of, of a, of a fertilised human egg. Uh, which means that, you know, it, in the, possibly in the future, it's very controversial, it could be used to correct gene defects in embryo or even go further and modify the human genome in, 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 in other ways, which is why this, this technique is, is raising concerns as well as, as, well as excitement. Personally, I, I'd, it would be valuable, I think, if we could um, have some kind of worldwide regulation, regulatory body that, that somehow uh, controlled all this, but I think that's, that's going to be difficult to achieve. What I think we do need is maximum debate about the, 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 the science itself, about the possibilities of the science, but also the potential uh, uh, ways it could be misused, um, so that we can have, um, uh, so that society as a whole is able to make some kind of decision about uh, the pros and cons of this kind of uh, research, this kind of new technology. Um, but I think that's got to be on the basis of an understanding of the actual science rather than, you know, rather this, some of the scare stories you sometimes get.